Hello, and welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, rate, review, and subscribe to our show on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We want to hear your thoughts on the movies and shows we review. Leave us a comment on Apple Podcasts or our YouTube channel, and we will read them during the show. Or reach out to us on social media. We love talking all things entertainment and pop culture with you. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hello, Ashley. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well because like, if you had asked me, Delora, in light of everything going on in the world, how do you feel? This time last week, I would have been like, oh, I'm stressed as fuck. <laughs> and surprisingly, I'm, I'm doing great. <laughs> I take it day by day. I'm okay. I'm good today. Now ask me how I felt, what, even two days ago. I was stressed as fuck. So yeah, um, depends on how much I have to engage and interact with the reality of the world. <laughs> and it's a combination of both like personal and like the, the things that are going on in this world. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. But we'll get it into it. A lot. We will. But one of the things I was doing last week, I attended Black Tech Week mm-hmm. here in Cincinnati, and it was fabulous. I got a chance to sit in on several conversations, two notable ones, and I'll talk about it today. The first, a boy, Stacy Spikes. <laughs> Friend of the pod. Oh, friend of the pod, y'all. I am not even, this isn't even hyperbole. Like that conversation is just stellar, y'all. Y'all need to hear it. Our conversation with Stacey, I mean, he was such a great guest because he was so open about his journey and he has such a high profile, high stakes, lots of money. And um, he was generous with his story and and with his time. Y'all, please check it out. And I say that too, because in his session um, during the conference, I was like, oh, <laughs> I knew about some of this stuff. He said this on our podcast. <laughs> link, let me shoot you a link. What's your number? You got Spotify? You got Apple Podcasts? You got any of the things? Any of the things. But of course, he came with some new some new stuff. And it was it was phenomenal. First of all, his session was called Failing Up. And um it was just really fascinating because he was talking about like um, having the mantra of cheaper, better, faster, and how that went into um, how they create a movie pass and understanding your, your customer needs and being able to know your numbers and to give a pitch in 15 minutes um, and not waste the time of the person you're presenting to when it comes to fundraising. And it was just, it was just, amazing um and then the great Ava DuVernay was the keynote speaker and she was so generous again with her story and she also gave us a level of vulnerability that I thought was endearing because she's like what do you want me to talk about she's like I'm not tech and we're like you're a freaking director what do you mean and it's like even if you can't specifically speak to tech, whether, you know, the entrepreneurial side of like developing code and, and a business in that way, you can still tell us about your story. And then, so based off of, you know, the questions that was asked and her answer, she really focused on how storytelling is important, Ashley, and how money is everywhere. Because when it came to origin, she funded it um, much differently than the traditional um, Hollywood way. And the other thing that I really appreciated about her 
um, discussion, especially around origin, origin now on Hulu. So I'm super mm-hmm. excited about that because we will definitely be recapping that y'all. She's like, the way they did things in Hollywood was the way that these men, nine times out of 10 white men did things. And she's like, it's okay to do things differently. It's okay to look outside the box. So one of the things that one of her mantras when funny origin was money is everywhere. And so she was able to find money with different nonprofit organizations to contribute to the funds. And it, it, it got made, <laughs> you know what I mean? And it kind of aligns with the whole redefining success and knowing that success is non-linear. And I, I think those are some really important lessons. And she's like, be deliberate and diligent. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What'd you say? And our mayor, shout out to Mayor Aftab, he made he made um July 18th, Ava DuVernay Day in Cincinnati. It was her first time in the city. Very nice. Well, thank you for allowing us to share in some of the experience with you for those of us who did not make it. I definitely am hoping to make it this year. It's funny, my brother uh, made it this year as well. And I think he sat did behind he? you. I think he was Shut like, I think door. I saw Delora. And I think I was sitting behind her for Ava. I would have uh, said hi. I didn't yeah, see him. <laughs> yeah. I think he just he was like, I think I saw her. He just wasn't 100 percent because he saw a couple yeah. other people there, too, um, including one of our old classmates um, that we went to Dayton Public Schools with. So shout out to all my Dayton Public Schools peeps. Um, but anyways, yeah, I definitely um, love that wisdom and that messaging that you got from friend of the pod and, and a, a, a soon to be friend of the pod in Ava DuVernay. You know, Absolutely. I'm going to speak that into existence. They're in the same circle. I, yeah, mean, I mean, Stacey spoke about her on his in conversation exactly. and her, you know, start start at urban world and all the things. So, I mean, that's why I say I'm speak going in and speaking into existence now because check exactly. this, roll this back in a few is all I'm saying. But anyway, <laughs> I'm here. I'm right there with you, Ashley. Anyway, oh, I love it. You know what I also loved? Uh, it was very anecdotal, but it cracked me up. She was like, you know, black women in Hollywood. And she talked about how like hanging out with Issa, Issa turn up was a lot more than what she was used to. Um, but then when she tried to hang out with Shonda, she was like, Shonda is the, on the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> and that tickled me so much. And the other thing that I was reminded of in that conversation is Ava directed an episode of Scandal. And that mm. epi- and the way that influenced um, Array and Queen Sugar, she said that was the idea behind, you know, promoting women directors behind each episode um, to give them a chance and opportunity because she was look, you know, she made her, she, she said she made and financed her first few films and she was waiting for a job and she realized that she had to create her own. Yep. And yes, she's been boss lady ever since. Hmm. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. I'm glad you had a fantastic time. Black tech week every July in Cincinnati yes okay it's it's july is hot for black ten, events okay apparently essence <laughs> black yes. tech week yes you have a abff that happens right before oh so. that's true that's mm-hmm. true yeah it's it's 10th year and i think this is the third or fourth year in cincinnati because it used to be in in florida got it very nice well i'm refreshed at least compared to last say, week. Give us a move some update. How are things? Are you unpacked? I mean, I was unpacked after two days. That's why I was so exhausted because I really okay. pushed. I say I took two weeks to pack and two weeks to un- uh, I'm sorry, two weeks to pack and two days to unpack, which was insane. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends was like, you should teach a class. I said, nah, I hate moving. <laughs> <laughs> when I no tell way. you, I am paying people moving forward. I It's the, one of the worst things ever. And you did a multi-state yeah. move. That was yeah. major, Ashley. I mean, I'm still dealing with the claims I had to file because guys, 
they broke some of my stuff. So it was not s- simple, mm-hmm. easy, but so many other things were simple and easy, which I'm so grateful for. I'm so appreciative of. So all I needed was catch up on my rest, get in some good sleep, get in some naps. And I've been able to do that. So I'm feeling much better and I'm ready to bring some energy to the podcast today. So what are we talking about? Well, it's an interesting news week, Ashley. <laughs> You know, we live in the domain of pop culture, but when I tell you that politics is the main conversation, it's the main conversation. But before we get to that, let's talk about something that uh, is pretty major coming up and I'm pretty excited. That is the Summer Olympics in Mm -hmm. Paris. And I thought this was a heartwarming story. I am looking at... The Associated Press, LeBron James selected as Team USA male flag bearer for Paris Olympics opening ceremony. Uh, I love this. I love this. It's a major deal to be chosen. This is, I mean, I'm speculating, but I don't feel like I'm wrong. (laughs) This may be his last Olympics. And he's such a legendary player and sportsman and representing the United States. I think this is a wonderful idea in this article here. It says LeBron James isn't totally sure what opening ceremony was all about when he was picked for his first Olympics in 2004. That's yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. There's a documentary on the men's basketball Olympic run with him, with Kobe, with um a bunch of them. Um, I think it was a, I think I labeled it as a hidden gem a while back. Um, but I'm sure it's still out there and available because they had to, I mean, the men's basketball team has faced some more competition than I've ever seen so far right In now. Recent years, yeah. But you know, it's definitely there has not been as dynamic of a team as the dream team back in the 90s in terms of that level of dominance. So I will be curious. Like, it's not going to be a cakewalk, I guess, is my main point. And then I'm seeing a Yahoo article. I didn't realize LeBron had missed the last two Olympics. I don't know where I was, but like, I didn't realize oh, that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um. But y'all, it's a big deal to be the flag bearer because it says here... He becomes the third basketball player and the first men's player to carry the U.S. flag at the start of the Olympics, joining the great Don Stanley for the Athens Games in 2004 and Sue Bird for the Tokyo Games in 2021. He said, it's an incredible honor to represent the United States on this global stage, especially in a moment that can bring the whole world together. For a kid from Akron, this responsibility means everything to not only myself, but my family, all the kids in my hometown, my teammates, fellow Olympians, and so many people across the country with big aspirations. So yeah, this is this is wonderful. And you know what's also shocking in this article? Apparently this is Steph Curry's first Olympics. I was like, what? Yeah. I I just must not have been paying attention to men's basketball. These I, last I promise you I've not. Years, it's been, or last it's couple been track and gymnastics and, and apparently swimming. Br- uh, and swimming, break dancing, first year for that. Um, <laughs> good for y'all. Good for y'all. Pickleball okay. made it yet? Girl. If not, it's only a matter of time. You remember when we were growing up, they were trying to make football an Olympic sport and it didn't really work out. I don't remember, but God forbid, y'all already (laughs) barely stay healthy throughout the the regular season. Like, don't do that. Exactly. Um, And who else is playing American football? Nobody. Exactly. And I think it's also worth mentioning that Celine Dion is set to perform uh, at the Olympics for the rumor, according to TMZ, for $2 million for one song. That makes me so nervous because if anybody's seen the documentary, yep, 
I'm so nervous for her to actually perform. She had an episode just recording in the studio. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that makes me nervous. I don't know if I'm going to watch. And you know, that anxiety, that anxiety you get right before you perform is a lot different than what even happens in practice. Right. So yeah. it's like, because it's her, her condition is exacerbated by her, like getting overstimulated. Right. And so I remember watching the documentary. And I'm like, if this is what going in the studio does going on stage would kill her. So I'm not gonna be, to, I don't think I'm gonna be to watch y'all just, y'all yes. just let me know. We're talking about her stiff person syndrome. And we found out in some of our previous conversation, you know, talking about her anticipated um, documentary that's now officially out on Amazon Prime that it could even break ribs. So like there is there is a medical severe medical incident that almost ends the documentary. It was so scary to witness. I can only imagine what it's like to live through. Her whole body locked up, including her face. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the rumor going around. I'm looking at people. It says Celine Dion greets fans in Paris as rumors of her performing at 2024 Summer Olympics grow stronger. We will see. We will see. We, we. No, that was really corny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and talk about some things that are upcoming since we're talking about Pally. Uh, the new trailer for Emily in Paris, season four is dropped, Ashley. Um, girl, I haven't watched season three. Are we excited about <laughs> this new season? <laughs> I watched season three. And I think my big thing with Emily in Paris at this point is that I don't ship her couple dumb with the one. Anybody? No, I, I like the black bond but like i don't alfrey yeah alfie i don't ship alfie. her relationship with the parisian bond that it seems like Get, they're trying to push her towards. gabrielle yes i don't ship that it's messy it's messy and it's also just like uh, i'm just not a, it don't move me and i, I ship hard you know i stopped yeah. watching shows over y'all not putting <laughs> the main character with the person i think they should be with Certain shows we playing in your, in our faces like that, and I hate when Girl. that happens. Girl. I actually, Sleepy Hollow was like that. Did you ever watch Sleepy Hollow? Not the show, just the film. Oh well, that film is legendary. Um, but the show with the great Nicole Bahari. Um, I don't. But they kicked. I think off they were. Of. Yeah, I think they were racist. Frankly speaking, and they didn't want him Ichabod's character to be with her. And they had more chemistry than him and his own wife. So I was like, y'all, y'all suck. So they're Olivia and Fitz is what I'm hearing. It would have been before Olivia and Fitz because I think Sleepy Hollow came out before Skittle, right? Around the same time. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. So, I mean, I watched season three. I cannot say I'm excited for season four. Am I going to watch season four? Absolutely. Because I'm even, I was off the Cobra Kai bandwagon and the new season dropped and I said, well, fuck it. I'm going to watch Cobra Kai. Is it as good as the earlier seasons? For me, this season is starting off stronger just because finally the kids are getting along and I'm just have been so over. Like y'all have kids fighting to the death. I don't want to watch that. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's so funny. Like, this is very <laughs> big concept going real deep real quick. As a society, we're okay with violence, but when it comes to love, it's like, close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it like, shocks me. I mean, I'm I'm cringy with both, but it does shock me how vicious people like their entertainment to be like I remember I even brought the one movie back to the pod that I had a like an advanced screening for that it was Jodie Comer it was um Ben it was um uh Matt Damon and it was um the one dude with the dark hair tall brooding kind of funny faced let me think of something he's been in (laughs) I know that wasn't a good, that wasn't a good, uh, wasn't a good description. Adam something, uh, Adam. Yes. Adam driver. Yes. Yeah. 
And it was like back in the olden days, and it was like dual. And that dual, like I could not even sit with, like I had to close my eyes in the theater. And there were people in the back like shouting. And I'm like, how are y'all even what stomaching? What movie is this? Girl. Matt Damon and Adam Driver. Yes, this was, this came out. It's not been that long ago. It's probably only. The like, last duel. Yes, it was probably only one. Yep, I was about to say only within the last three to four years. So yeah, that was vicious and not as even as vicious as like game of thrones right and right some of those that i can't like game of thrones there'd be episodes y'all i was either off my couch hiding behind a wall or hiding behind a Girl, pillow because i'm like that show was intense oh <laughs> my goodness so yeah i am always surprised by the level of like violence that people not just can tolerate but like cheer on mm-hmm. okay Since we're still in Europe, let's go ahead and talk about other major TV news. Also, in its fourth season, Bridgerton released the new love story. And The Bachelor is Benedict Bridgerton. (laughs) According to many people, the sexiest Bridgerton. (laughs) Although, I personally love me some Anthony. It's finally here, Ashley. Okay, I'm looking at Variety. It says... Bridgerton season four to center on Benedict's Bridgerton's love story with Lady in Silver, Sophie. So they are staying true to the book because Sophie was his love interest in the book. Yes. And and she was a girl, right? (laughs) So like, I know there's a lot of, we'll get into that when we recap Bridgerton season three, but um, they are staying true to the book. I will say, um benedict was not sexually curious in the books uh like he is on the show so it's interest. it's going to be interesting how they bring that all together uh there's rumors that they're looking for an east asian woman to play sophie so it's interesting like what direction they'll go in but that's the rumor we don't we don't have an official casting yet and his book his book was fine. I his book was an offer from a gentleman. Honestly, with his book, my mouth was on the floor because the offer he gave this lady was like insanity. But we'll talk about that when we talk Richardson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. And so after the first two seasons, season three and season four was greenlit. So We don't know the future of the show just yet, Ashley. We just know that we have season four and we're waiting for our lady lady. And unfortunately, it's going to take them another two years to make this freaking show, which Mm -hmm. makes no sense to me. (laughs) I think if they end with Francesca, that'll be fine. You don't want Eloise. I feel like if they try to like what do they do with Eloise in the books? Because if they try to change Eloise to fit the times, I'm going to be upset. That is a great point. Eloise's love story was actually quite nice, but it is different because it's more of a pen pal situation. That's how she got to know her husband, which means she really didn't know her husband. (laughs) So she met him. Yeah, I don't know if um, I need it. I don't know if we need it as the audience. I think I want all I want all the sibling stories just to see how they panned out because the show is better than the books. It truly is. And that's a that's a tough feat. All right. I'll leave it to y'all diehard Bridgerton people. I'm not. You know, me and if, if Queen Charlotte was the only output that had ever come from this, I would have been totally fine with that. You're like, we're done. Yeah. Ashley, though, Ashley, and you know what's so funny? Bridgerton was my gateway drug into Regency romance books. I'm, I love a good bodice ripper. Like, I'm not even ashamed. I'm not because they can be so freaking good, and they can be really hot too. And I'm just like, yo, who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Hilarious. And what I was trying to get at is Bridgerton ain't even the best ones like shout out to my girl Stacey Reed any of her Regency books are like 10 times better she is a black woman who writes about 
Regency romance. She doesn't do, you know, the blind casting or anything. She does write it as if, you know, white people in Britain. But her stories are so good and they're so interesting. And and the spice is spicy. And like, it is just good. And yeah, speaking of Bridgerton, everybody loves Bridgerton, including J-Lo. Because she had a Bridgerton themed birthday party for her 55th birthday. And I was just like, I'm here for this. I love this so much. <laughs> Even stars get gagged by Bridgerton. I, I love it. Um, it's also interesting that Ben didn't show. So the rumors about them breaking up is looking like it's uh maybe some truth behind those those discussions there, Ashley. Any thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I don't know what to say about Ben and, and Jennifer. They seem to be living separate lives. They sold their house. So yep. maybe they're going to be one of those couples, though, where it's like, you know what? We're better partners when we are separate more than we are up underneath each other. Because I think even Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn said the older they've gotten, the better it works when they spend you know, not even probably 60% of their time together all the time. So maybe this is the era they're in and it's going to work out better for them to be like, all right, let's live in separate houses and let's just visit. Let's just visit each other. Well, that's what Gwyneth Paltrow did with her second or third husband. I think she's been engaged multiple times, but she's only been married twice. Yes. She, she said that he still got his house and she got hers. And that's a lot to do with them having, you know, families and, you know, the idea of coming together, but I don't think they're going to be coming together under one big house. I think her teenagers are going to stay at her house and his teenagers going to stay at his house and they meet in the middle. Yeah. I mean, what works, works different strokes for different folks. You said it, you said it. And The last thing in quick headlines, Deadpool and Wolverine. Scenes from the red carpet, world premiere. I'm looking at Forbes. Um, I'm bringing this up because these are some of my faves. Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, highly anticipated summer blockbuster. I mean, the projections are already favorable for this movie. I think there's going to be a lot of cameos. <laughs> Are you interested in seeing this movie? And oh, so in one of the um, late night interviews, Ryan Reynolds was asked if there would be a fourth Deadpool. And he said that his wife and his kids would divorce him. And he's like, I don't have a prenup. So no. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm gonna end up seeing this. Am I gonna see it in theaters? We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'll end up seeing it because you know, Marvel tend to watch a lot of the stuff, if not all the stuff. And I am a fan of both, and I love their real life relationship between Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. So I'm sure the chemistry is gonna be great. Are we gonna yeah. talk about the Gigi Hadid Blake Lively outfits? We can. Blake Lively is looking amazing. It looks like she's taking notes from Zendaya and Law with the whole, um, you know, dressing to theme. I love that color on her. She looks amazing. I do not love what Gigi Hadi is wearing. <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't like either of their looks. I think Blake's fit better and made more sense. Bella, yes. I was, I mean, Gigi rather, not Bella. Gigi looks like she's supposed to be trying to be one of the Flintstones. I was confused I, about this I yellow. I haven't liked a good low rise since 2006, personally. Belt. It's, yeah, it's a no for me, dog. Um, but everybody was on this carpet. We got Madonna and Bob Iker. Like, it's it's actually oh, Bob Iger makes sense, but yeah, it does. But you know, he's not, it's not every day he's showing up on nobody's red carpet um, because it is like the joining of the Fox and Disney Marvel um, studios coming together. So they're saying this and twisters are going to bring back the blockbuster, Ashley. No. I'm like, what about Bad Boys 4? That was a, one of the first, you know, box office hits of the year. So anyway, 
Yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, first of all, Twister doesn't excite me at all. Um, Glenn Powell doesn't do it for you, Ashley. We've had this conversation with Hitman. <laughs> yes, he seems yeah. lovely. He seems yes. like a lovely human being. They are trying to make Fetch work. And for me, it's not, I, okay, he has all the things going for him because I told you, he feels more like the next Matthew McConaughey to me. But something doesn't click. I don't know what it is. Yeah, he doesn't have the charm of Matthew McConaughey for me, uh, especially rom-com era Matthew McConaughey. Um, this whole Matthew McConaughey not showering, though, kind of, I mean, not, not putting on deodorant, rather, kind of uh, made. It feels a, on brand. It's, a, it's a like he, a, when I think of Matthew McConaughey, I think he, not. I think hot and sweaty and sticky. Yeah, but I didn't ever think stinky. So there's that. Um you but, know who probably doesn't wear deodorant and probably smells amazing? You think Lenny just be rubbing crystals under his armpits? I think he's too busy drinking watermelon and eating pineapples and he probably smells fantastic. Well, he does probably take a lot of baths. So. He's always in that leather. So that's where I think it kind of comes. But I have to be honest, Black people, we don't play with like being musty. So I don't. No. We do. Culturally, I just can't imagine him not wearing deodorant for those reasons. But I mean, we'll see. But knowing we'll Lenny, he probably has found a crystal that he uses. <laughs> he might. But yeah, so so I don't know. Uh, Twister, no. But this, I mean, I'm sure it'll do well. Is it going to do Spider Man numbers? Is it going to do, you know, Black Panther numbers? I don't foresee it. But no, it's still rated R, so I think it'll probably do well for a rated, rated R film for sure. Is this going to be Hugh Jackman's last run as Wolverine too? Probably he should be. I wouldn't be surprised because like the last movie, Wolverine was supposed to be his last, and it was and I not. I hated that movie. I came out of it that was movie rough. sick to my stomach. Mm. Rough. All right, let's get into the biggest hot topic in the world. Ashley, Joe Biden, president of the United States, 46, on Sunday, in a, they called it, I'm looking at the Washington Post, sending shockwaves through the political world, announced that he is not seeking re-election. This has not been done since 1968, Ashley. In his letter, he says, it has been the greatest honor of my life to serve you as your president. He said, and while it has been my intention to seek re-election, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term. Shortly after this announcement, and this was in um, a social social media post, he endorsed his vice president, Kamala Harris, to replace him as the, the they say, the Democratic Party's standard barrier ahead of the National Convention, August 19th through the 22nd let's talk about our initial feelings let's talk about our feelings going into sunday and the announcement before his endorsement i want to know your thoughts and your feelings so i had heard that this was coming um it had obviously been discussed i had not actually watched the debate but i had heard enough you know i had heard enough commentary i'd heard enough of his um his reaction and, and his rationale and but I had been hearing like oh it's a done deal once Obama put out a statement I really felt like something was going to be changing um but I still did not know like if it, it I, I was never so like oh for sure he's that he's gonna step aside because it just felt so um out of the ordinary of anything I've ever experienced. Yes. Um, and he seemed so stoic in the fact that like, I can do this. I can still handle this. Um, so I was surprised when I first saw it. And then I think once I saw it, I was like, 
well, damn, what does this mean? Are we fucked? Like what, right. what, what is, what is, what are our chances with any other candidate? And, you know, Kamala being the one that most likely was going to come. What does this mean for Kamala? Right. I'm glad that you say that because leading into Sunday, I was really sick of the Democratic Party fighting out loud in front of everybody. I'm like, keep your business at home. Yep. <laughs> we do not need our infighting in the streets. Yep. It's embarrassing. And honestly, I thought we got a reprieve after the incident that happened. And but no, the conversation kept going. I'm like, y'all, why are we talking about this? He said he's gonna run. And I'm going to stick beside him. (laughs) People were saying, even if Joe Biden's head is in a jar, I'm voting for that over Trump. if dude was in a wheelchair, it it was, I I was good with it. (laughs) If that's that's the only other choice we had. If that was the only choice we had. And so when he made the announcement, as you know, I texted, no, because I was... I saw what AOC said in her lives. Like, I appreciate it when she takes the time to just do her lives and just like give everybody tea. She's like, the same people who are trying to kick out Joe Biden don't want Kamala Harris to be the head of the ticket. And so for me as a Black woman, I'm already in my feelings like, you know, how, how who are these people in particular and what's their grand ideas, right? If they don't want Kamala, you know, if if they're so adamant about pushing Joe out and to even Whoopi Goldberg's point on the view, it just felt very ageist. And I just wanted us to be a little bit mindful of what was going on because, um, you know, looking at the competition, it was pretty much one for one in terms of cognitive. <laughs> Go ahead and throw a toupee on Biden's head and it looks the same. <laughs> Let's not play these games. We're playing with, you know, apples and apples. No, uh, obviously just at the bare minimum um, because there's a stark difference between the two candidates here. And so I was just like, what are we going to do? The co- The convention is next month election is what three months away what the fuck yeah what and so when he came out and endorsed kamala i have to say and the way that everyone got in line i was surprised ashley were you i was panicked I can't even say I was surprised. I was panicked because I just, it, everything's just coming, feels like it's coming at us so fast in terms of um, really getting down to the wire with this and figuring things out, right? Like, again, talking about who can really go up against Trump and the reality of what it means if someone cannot defeat him and all that just swirls in my mind. Like, I can't even, I can't even, everybody, you know, there's some people who are so hopeful and like, oh, let's take this moment of pride to have a black woman at the head of the ticket. I was like, I can't even feel those feelings because I'm so like terrified of what, is about to happen. So I want to feel like when Obama was up for election, I remember the hope. I remember the joy. I remember the pride. I cannot feel that in this moment for this black woman. Like I want to, because because you feel like you want to protect her. Not just that. It's just like with the racism and misogyny at an all time high, what like what is going to happen you know what i mean people are declaring there may be a civil war if trump loses and all this shit and i'm just like my my mental exhaustion from the possibilities wears me down before i can even really get to like a feeling of wow let me sit in this moment let me take in this moment I, i am i am really wanting to get out and be more active and be more supportive for Kamala during this time. And I want there to be a true opportunity for her to succeed. Because one thing I kept saying, even with this 
talk they had about Biden was, why didn't y'all have a better succession plan already in place? You knew exactly. this man wasn't getting no younger. And that yet is what I am saying. Hide Kamala during his presidency yep. and not show the leadership she could have already been showing examples of throughout. He probably didn't want the shine to be off of him because he already knew what it was like to be second in command after wanting to have run for president because, you know, uh, well, that's too he was goddamn to run bad. when <laughs> Hillary was, uh, when she ran. And so, yeah, I, there could have been a better succession plan because right now it just feels, you know, it felt like, okay, this is, y'all are changing all the rules now. Okay. <laughs> Definitely changing the rules. And now people are asking, well, is he just going to go ahead and resign and let Kamala finish out his term? And is that going to be more helpful for her campaign if she's able to at least show like, hey, I was able to successfully be president for three, four months um, to be considered more of an incumbent? I mean, it's just, it's just a lot. It's it a is lot. a lot. Is a lot. And y'all, we're talking about this because this is impacting our lives. <laughs> and it's 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 the biggest story in the entire world right now. I'm looking at the BBC now. It says Kamala Harris wins enough support to clinch the Democratic nom nomination. And they said on Monday evening, said she received the endorsement of more than 1,976 delegates needed to win the nomination in the first round. And I believe, I believe she's the presumptive nominee. So now we're looking at conversations around her VP. So of course, when it comes to VP, it's all about balancing the ticket and they're probably going to get somebody from a purple or battle state yep everybody um so i say all this to say let's bring in some of our pop culture elements to it um one person i was really pissed off leading up to the announcement on sunday is freaking george clooney like who gave george clooney this much power to be talking about joe needs to step down and mind you he has since endorsed kamala like is he that big of a do donor and that was another problem i had because i'm just like the people said we wanted Joe. He won the primaries. So now we're just going to lean the donors say they don't want to they don't want to vote for Joe. So let's be honest. Money has don't? always let's be honest. Money has always driven politics. Most of the time, the people who are actually making decisions are the people who have the most money in these packs, in these <sighs> groups that yeah. influence all aspects of our lives like let's be for real so george clooney yes because george clooney has risen double digit millions for the campaign you got damn right they let him have a say so the thing that's been fascinating with kamala harris that i feel like has allowed me to feel reinvigorated is the fact that she raised over a million dollars in like the first two hours. <laughs> 81 million in 24. 81 million in 24 hours. Wow. And everybody on social media is, is dusting off their Kamala pictures. I, <laughs> I'm talking about all the celebrities. Freaking Jessica Alba. I don't know if she, if she didn't have a picture with uh, Kamala sooner but one of her babies were babies in a picture that she posted wow ashley and i mean she was a california politician as well that's so. true touche <laughs> and speaking of that guess what her campaign song is freedom. beyonce freedom honestly the first time she spoke out was today in Wisconsin, I believe, or Milwaukee. Yeah. Milwaukee, Milwaukee Wisconsin. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I, I low-key got chills because it's 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 a powerful song, you know. I always say I'm beehive adjacent. I love freedom personally. And you know, these artists give these politicians permission to use their songs. And I I think. I think it's a smart one, a smart move, Ashley. What do you think? Yeah, 
I mean, and you know, Beyonce, I need, my brother mentioned this and I agree. I need all the big celebrity black women to be out in full force. Beyonce, Rihanna, all of y'all. So you said Kamala needs the, um, what are they called? The dual monogamy. <laughs> The door melage. The yeah. door melage. Yes. In full force. Black women unite. Okay. <laughs> In full force. Yes. Yes. Let's get this done. All right, Ashley. Uh, any other final thoughts before we discuss what we recap in next week? Mm, pray for us all. That's all I got. Pray for us all. Pretty much. All right. So as we mentioned, we are literally at the start of the Paris 2024 Summer Olympics. Very exciting time. And as a part of that, we are recapping Simone Biles Rising. First two episodes of her documentary available on Netflix popped out as of July. Two two more will be due in the fall post-Olympics, as I'm sure they're following along her journey as we speak. And it was two hour-long episodes, but they were jam-packed. I mean, we got a they lot. Were. It's a really good documentary. Yeah, I'm we excited. got a lot. We got a lot from her relationship with her husband to her relationship uh, with her immediate family to yep. the twisties and her mental health and everything that went into her needing to pull out of the Tokyo Olympics to previous gymnasts discussing their experiences like Dominique Dawes, which was incredible. Um, and Girl, I love me some Dominique Dawes so much. Absolutely. I literally was getting teary eyed. I just posted on my stories today. Uh, Self Magazine got um, some of the the legends from 1996 championships Dominique Mochiano Dominique Dawes and Shannon Miller and I literally was in my feelings because they're everything and Dominique Dawes was she was the first black uh gymnast that really resonated with me because I knew she was in 92 96 and then she also competed in in 98 and I think she was one of the first gymnasts to compete in three Olympics in that way so Yeah. The last thing I was just going to say is obviously them following the comeback. Don't call it a comeback. But yeah, so it was really good. And I just wanted to discuss it a little bit as we are, again, gearing up for these Olympics. So come on back as you watch and get excited. Come on back and hear us out and make sure you check out the two episodes available on Netflix. And that's it. That's it. That's it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, please share this episode out with everybody you know. We appreciate it. We'll be back, as we mentioned, with that recap. But in the meantime, as always, be blessed. Bye.